How many people here today have ever spent a life in the cold at night? That's what over 100 million people outside in the entire world are going through. They are living on the streets without hope, without a future. Um, did you know that that is one third of the United States population without a home, without a place to lay their head? In my country of Kenya, where I come from, over 300,000 people live and survive on the streets, and the majority of them are youth. And we all, we all know what happened in Kenya in 2007. Um, and why do people go on the streets? Or why do the youth and children end up on the streets? Number one reason and primary reason is poverty, and it's extreme poverty. I was born in a slum called Madare Valley. It has, uh, it's synonymous to um, Central Valley. I don't know what happens, what's happening to the valleys, but uh, I moved to the countryside to live with my grandmother, who enrolled me to a school after my mom had passed away because of HIV AIDS. And because my grandma um, really, really valued education. She never went to school herself. She decided to enroll me to a school. And uh, she would try, work hard, and find me fair to even go to the city and just enjoy Islam life still. And one particular time I went, and I was unable to go back home where I was schooling. And that's how my education was cut short. So what did I do in Madare? I joined a gang that was led by my uncle, and be because if he was doing um, criminal activities, and he was supposed to be my role model, that was what I copied from him. And we, were able, we, were, we used to mug people a lot. We could uh, sometimes even stab people. And I was very young amongst these big people. Uh, going after people's necks, how we, uh, that's how we called it. And sometimes in our own free time, we will sit down, not knowing what to do, and we'll be like, there's no way we'll go hungry, there's no way we'll not find food. These people out here have money, and we'll go after the people that we thought had money, and rightfully so, because we had to eat. There's no way we were going to go hungry. And so, that made me witness a lot of uh, shootings on my friends. A lot of my friends died at a very young age, and I almost got shot at one particular time. And I felt that was very dangerous, and my life was going to end just like the other colleagues that I was with. And my friends, my younger friends, who I was in a group with, had already started going to the streets to collect scraps, um, and they will come back in the evening with some money, we'll have fun, we'll buy drugs and enjoy. And I thought maybe this is the alternative I should go for. Instead of mugging people, instead of witnessing people being stabbed and even others being killed by the bullet, maybe I should just take a sack and join, join my other colleagues. And that's exactly what I did. And for five years, I lived on the streets, every day taking my sack, moving around, collecting scraps, doing car wash to make money, because one thing on the streets, um, you have to be entrepreneurial, you have to find ways to make money. And um, some of the ways that we did was to beg. We, 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 we used to go after white people a lot, you know, we would be like, it was assumed that they had money. So we'll go after them and ask them for money in times that we didn't find a job at all. And the main thing that we did when we were, I was there in the base was to carry um, grocery for people. I was in a base that 
was selling grocery at a grocery market. And um, during this time, I'd completely lost contact with my family. My only sister, whom was younger than me, was in the village, and I didn't know where, how to find her. And I'll just show a picture of me and my sister. That's, that's me and my sister, Jacqueline. I lost touch with her for over 10 years. I was worried, I was devastated. I didn't know what was happening to her. So, what has been happening? I finally, in 2001, I was lucky. And I say lucky because a lot of my former colleagues are still on the streets. I was lucky. I met an American couple who had come to Kenya to visit. And they came grocery shopping to my base. And I went up to them and asked for work. Surprisingly, I didn't go and beg for money. I went and asked them to help them to carry their grocery to the car. And they gave me work. And uh, so while they were still doing shopping, something happened. Something that I think was meant to happen to give me that opportunity. While we were walking out, going to the car, there were guards that were hired to keep us at bay because we were outsiders. And so I was chased away. I almost got beaten, so I had to run away. And when I came back, I had to explain why that happened. So by the time they were, going to, they were finishing up their shopping, and because one thing that, is, that amazes me about Americans, I don't know uh, my country why we don't ask a lot of questions, they started asking me a lot of questions, you know, and why I was there and um, what is happening. So that, that, was like an that gave me an opportunity to talk to them and to share with them my aspirations, that I wasn't there because of choice, that I wasn't there because I wanted to. And they took interest in me. They helped me to get out of the streets. They took me to a rehabilitation center. And I was able to reform. Because when I was on the street, I was, still, I was sniffing glue. I was sniffing gas. Because sleeping out at night, it's hard to do it when you are sober. So I, was ref I went to the rehabilitation, reformed, and um, they invested in me. They invested in my education. They took me back to school and paid for my school fees. And something happened when I was at the center still. It abruptly was closed down. And so all of the youth that were in this rehab, those who didn't have their families had went back to the streets. And after I left the center, I, w I w was concerned about them. I was concerned about even my colleagues who are still in the base. And I saw the model how it was working. We were not being trained to stand on our feet. We were not being prepared to uh, do what to provide for ourselves, something that we were used to when we were on the street. Um, so I wanted to do something different. I wanted to reach out to my colleagues, whom I visited frequently, and to help them change their lives. So. How did I start? I started a business that my benefactor helped me to set up, it provided me with small capital, and I formed a very small business. And this business, I employed four other street youth. So my workshop would act as a place where they would sleep at night, and during the day we would work and make the crafts and go and sell them. But I wanted to expand it, because my specific colleagues had not yet left the streets. So I decided to create a nonprofit that is now working with street youths um, to help them become economically independent. Because I believe that in order to live beyond the street, you have to be independent. And street youth need just an opportunity to become economically independent and to move out of the streets. And why do we have serious youth problems in Kenya? Unemployment. Uh, um, it's a major, major issue in our country. And youth, if youth are not employed, you can just imagine what they'll do. And it happened in 2007, when our country was burning, when our country, when the whole world was worried 
uh, was shocked at what was happening in our country. It's because since youths are very desperate, politicians end up using them and they pay them as little as $3, 200 bob, and given machetes the, to go out there. And why would they accept it? Because they lack opportunity, because there are no alternatives. So I believe that in order to address uh, that problem and, and even to have peace and a lasting peace and, no, and, and non recurrence of what happened in our country in 2007, investing in youth is one key, is key. And how can we do this? We can do this by investing in education. I just recently joined college. I had never gone to college after I, I graduated from high school. I didn't have the chance. So I believe education is going to help them um, seek opportunities and give them uh, new ideas to be able to change themselves and even change their families. And other ways to provide um, skills training for them because we lack skills, entrepreneurship skills, financial education, those skills that will make, set them towards a path of, um, uh, of becoming successful and not being able to do things that are antisocial like it happens a lot. And I believe another way is by providing capital. The youth, many uh, institutions that we have are not youth friendly. Our youth can't access capital to start the economic uh, ventures that they want to do. And creating avenues and tools that are going to set them towards getting uh, uh, economically independent is one sure way of helping them and help, uh, helping maintain peace in a country like Kenya and most of Africa because we have a lot of problems and most people who do this are the youth. Because in Kenya, 60, over 60 percent of unemployed people are youth. That's, that's, that's mind-boggling, you know. And um, so for me, an opportunity for a youth is an opportunity to their family. A youth can be is a girl and a boy because that will mean we have a fair world, we have a world where we can live and be happy. There's no need why we should go hungry. There's no need why uh, these youth should be out there sleeping on the streets and losing hope completely. And I just want to sh share one story of, uh, two stories of our youth that have gone through Quito. That is Mili. Mili joined us in our first class, she had completely lost hope with life. She, she went through our program and then we were able to secure her scholarship. And now she's in school. You can see the bright smile in her face. She's, on, she's set towards the path towards economic independence. She's even providing for her son, who she didn't know what to do with. She had moved with a man out of desperation. She got a child and then she was dumped. So her kid is in kindergarten. She's able to pay the school fees, and even pay, go to school herself. And this is Anthony. Anthony, after he graduated from Quito, he decided to start his own microenterprise. And right now, he occasionally employs at least four youth once in a while when he has so many orders, and that helps them get income. And we hope to do more of this. We hope to provide more opportunities for the youth. And I'll just finish by saying, uh, the next time you walk around, you even visit the world and you see a homeless youth or a street youth, don't see a street youth, see potential that is, is in them and what they can do to make their lives better. Thank you.